What is it? It's so good. Millennials. It tastes like millennials. What would you consider to be a food of the future? <laughs> a food of the future. Uh, anything that they send into space. Definitely not that weird space ice cream you can get at the Air and Space Museum. Maybe like all, everything beyond me. Recently, Whole Foods actually released a list of foods they expect to see more of next year. So based off that list and a few other sources, Kay. today you're gonna be trying seven different foods which might become trends in 2020, and we'll see if you think they will thrive or fail. Okay, okay, I'm too poor to shop at Whole Foods, so this is gonna be like a super fun experience for me. Are you ready for your first item? Yes, bring me all of them. What we got, oh, almond butter? Or is it peanut butter? No, on peanut butter. I don't know, I just like the consistency. Uh, it doesn't smell like peanut butter. It doesn't smell like anything, that's what's weird. I feel like I know the taste. Is it like almond butter? No. That's not peanut butter. I know this flavor. What is this flavor? I love peanut butter. I li literally would just, I used to just eat peanut butter as a meal. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Little dippage. It's a nut butter. <laughs> Or at least I, it tastes like one. So with the rise of alternative foods comes chickpea butter. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> so it's hummus. <laughs> okay. Blessed be to the chickpea. I am so down for that. Okay. I actually had a salad last night with like a million chickpeas on it and I scooped them all off and threw them in the trash because <laughs> I don't particularly like chickpeas. So this alternative is available in creamy and crunchy options and contains only chickpeas, olive oil, cane sugar, and organic palm oil, which makes it a perfect alternative for people allergic to nuts. No freaking way. This is not peanuts at all. Oh, wow. I don't like the consistency of peanut butter and it actually tastes like peanut butter. I like this more than almond butter. Almond butter kind of seems a little runny. What I'm thinking right now is like, if this is healthy or unhealthy, cause like, it might seem like a cool alternative, but palm oil, sugar, tastes bomb though. Tastes good, tastes good. It works really well. I, I absolutely love this. I would definitely buy this. Here is your next item. Ooh, good Lord, Jesus. It looks like feet. It smells like pickled stuff. At first I thought it was chicken, but I see some seeds. Is this a, like a jackfruit? It's really interesting because my friend's a chef and she told me that jackfruit is being used as like a meat substitute. I don't like this one. No. Not for me. <laughs> Putting that right over there. Wow. Millennials. It tastes like millennials. It's got the consistency of almost like um, uh, artichoke hearts. I like it. What is it? So what you just ate is jackfruit. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, I'll have to pass on this one. I've had jackfruit before, I'm not a fan. I could tell because it just, just the shape of it, when you chew into it, it's a very distinct like feeling. It's weird because it's a fruit, or they call it a fruit, but like when you look at that and when you taste that, that definitely your brain is like, mm, are you sure, bitch? Because it doesn't taste like any fruit I've ever had. So they are a species of tree in the fig, mulberry, and breadfruit family, and okay. it's believed to originate from Asia. When it's raw and ripe, the jackfruit typically tastes sweet and similar to pineapples or mangoes, but when it is unripe, it has a more neutral flavor, which often is used as a meat replacement. Okay, I feel like I'd probably like it sweet. Not for me. I would like to try the ripe and sweet version. That was disgusting. People make uh, vegan pulled pork sandwiches using jackfruit, which looks super cool and I'm sure they're super tasty. I didn't really like the flavor of this one, but I'm sure it's awesome in whatever way you cook it. I don't know that I'm going to purchase it, but if I, I mean Popeyes makes a chicken sandwich out of it or something like that, I'm gonna go get it. Here is your next item. You guys in the hot sauce. Mm. Smells like barbecue-y. Like a sweet and sour almost sauce, like almost like a sweet and sour barbecue sauce. It's not spicy, but it definitely has a little bit of like flavor to it. This is really good. Whoa. The f It's not spicy at all. What? It's hot sauce without the hot. <laughs> oh, so into it. Oh my God, yes. What is it? 
It's so good. So this is gochujang. Gochujang. There's like a giant brick of it at my house. Which is a red chili paste that contains glutinous rice, fermented soybeans, salt, and sometimes sweeteners. Even though this particular product has been a staple in Korean cuisine for years, many are predicting that in 2020, there will be a rise of fermented food products like kojujang and kombucha. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I drink kombucha regularly, so I know that one. Uh, I'm This is going in the fridge, for sure. It's cool to see, like, uh, these sorts of foods get kind of, like, spread out to the rest of the world. So, like, you know, people can get a taste for, like, Korean food. We use gochujang for just about everything. There's so many flavors in that that it's unbelievable, right? It's sweet, it's healthy, it's all the things. 2020 is a year of Korean food. I know kimchi's been a big thing. It's becoming more of a wave. Like, I know Kofu's is selling it, kombucha. Just fermented foods, I think people are just like understanding more like the benefits of like probiotics and like good bacteria. So I could see it getting huge. Well, here is your next one. Yes. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's warm. That looks like pure egg yolk with cinnamon on top. I feel like this is turmeric, like turmeric or there's turmeric in it. So I grew up drinking this stuff. I mean, you gotta, this is how you get strong bones. It's called haldi kadud. So haldi is turmeric, dud means milk. So golden milk at press juicery. Wow, I like this. It tastes like it has a little bit of uh, ginger in it. Hmm, neutral. Warm. I'm curious as to why it's yellow. So this is a turmeric latte. Turmeric, there we go. Okay, so it's spice water. Mmm, this is really good. So turmeric lattes, as well as other colorful plant-based lattes have been growing in popularity over the past few years. Yo, this Max, you did a good job. With social media apps like Instagram and Facebook, many want the picture-perfect drink to match their feed, leading to more colorful beverages, like this drink, along with the beetroot and matcha latte, or the rainbow latte, which was massively popular in Australia a couple years ago. This wouldn't really like fit my feed, but... One of these things is not like the other. I mean, it's not, it doesn't taste bad, but I can see how somebody would do it for the aesthetic. Yeah, I can see that taking off. My friends were all doing a juice cleanse, and so I got, um, beet juice, and then I mixed it with vodka and said, look, you guys, I'm doing it too. <laughs> Just so I could have some color. <laughs> Instagrammable food is a huge business. There's a little bit of motivation going behind just being like, look at this, I'm cool. I got a turmeric latte. <laughs> I'm actually surprised that turmeric out of everything got popular because it's like one of the most staining items there is and on your lips, on your hands. Once the IG Baddies are like, oh, my shit's all stained. Like, they're gonna be like, all right, never mind, back to matcha. Well, here is your next item. Ooh, whoa, cheese. So it's not cheese. It looks like cheese, but I doubt it's cheese. It looks like cheese. I am going to assume that this is a nut cheese. This trend is all about helping the environment. It's called regenerative agriculture. No way. Regenerative agriculture describes farming and grazing practices that aim to reverse climate change by capturing carbon in soil and plants. So it's ethical cheese. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, I'm a fan of the ethical cheese. This is from a company called Cowgirl Creamery that oh. makes- I love them, yay. They source their products from local dairy farms, helping reduce the amount of animals that are used in the process. Wow, that's amazing. It literally changes the game. I really like that companies are becoming so much more aware of how they're affecting the environment. I have family members who make sure like everything's ethical from like the point of start to end and they'll pay an extra five, 10 for their meal. Hopefully like everyone jumps on the same wave and like treats it as a long-term investment for our body and world versus just this is my meal right now. So do you think you might be trying to find more regenerative agricultural food in the future? Yeah, I would. It makes you feel good. And I would absolutely try another one in the same process that it was made. Well, here's your next one. Favorite food. Let's go. I love burgers. Just tomatoes, lettuce, cheese, and something that apparently looks like beef. Apparently. Mmm. <laughs> There's something different about this burger. Is this like a, is this like an impossible meat? Not quite. Is this some sort of soy? What is this? Plant-based food items have become increasingly popular. There we go. But 
This burger is actually a blend of both plant and meat products. Mmm, hybrid. By blending these two foods together, many say that you get the best of both worlds as there's still the meat quality and taste of the food, but also helps improve the food sustainability and public health because you're not using as much animal product. That's, this is amazing. Like, I love where the world is heading with their food. If they just substitute all the burgers at like McDonald's with this, it would be great. I think it's definitely a good idea. Still not well executed completely. I can taste the difference. I really can't. I mean, I think you either go one or the other. What's the point, right? You're still eating meat. For me personally, like, I guess I would be like, if I want to get an Impossible Burger, I'm gonna get that. And then if I just want a meat burger, I'm gonna do that. I don't think that this is gonna be something that's gonna like, really catch on. I think that's like the thing about it though too, the middle ground, like you just have to like do little things. We do meatless Mondays at home, so we try not to eat meat on Mondays. Like just doing that one day a week, like it's not really that hard. And I feel like it makes a difference. We will fly that out and we got one last food for you. Oh, my favorite thing in the world. The old faithful pizza. Oh, this is the cutest little slice of pizza ever. It smells so good. The crust is good. I don't see the wrong, it has a good zest to it, I think. Um, good flavoring, good seasoning. There's nothing I can tell that's like different from regular pizza. This is good. This may look like a normal pizza, but it is packed with vegetables as the crust is made out of cauliflower. Is it really? Okay, that's really good. I love cauliflower. That's like my favorite vegetable. How? To me, it still tastes doughy and bready. Like it's not like, oh, but I really like cauliflower and broccoli like by themselves. I see that more and more at like DIY pizza places. They offer cauliflower crust, which is super cool. I've never myself gotten it. Um, but I've always been curious about it. So we have been seeing a rise of gluten-free products as well as flour replacements with this one being cauliflower flour leading to foods like this pizza. Cauliflower flour is like my favorite thing you said all day. <laughs> I mean, I've done the um, cauliflower is rice, cauliflower is potatoes. I believe it or not, cauliflower is grits. This is really good. It's good, it's smart. They have it like everywhere now. I know they have it at Whole Foods. They have it at Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's knows what's up. Having normal pizza, you know how you get that like really like bloated and sleepy feeling afterwards? And you just wanna take a nap? Cauliflower doesn't do that, like you're still Good to go. I'm sure there's a lot of places in this area in Los Angeles that is artisanal cauliflower pizzas. And I'm sure I would enjoy some really, really good ones of those. I wouldn't doubt that I've already had some, I didn't realize it. So now that you have tried some of the food trends that people are predicting for the next year, out of what you had, what do you think could be the most popular in 2020? I think in 2020, we'll probably be messing with like cauliflower crust more often. The pizza, I can't get over the fact that the crust is made out of cauliflower. Go to Jang. People, you know, we're on the big sriracha kick and um, there's hot sauce sort of everywhere. I feel like that, that one has a different flavor. Maybe the chickpea peanut butter. I don't know if it'll like go on for a long time, chickpea butter, but it might for all of a sudden it's a good little section of like, boom. And also it tasted really good. Oh, the gochujang, for sure. It's gochujang. Like that is going to end up everywhere. McDonald's is gonna have gochujang sauce. Gochujang with nuggets, it's happening. 2020, I guarantee it. Thanks for watching this episode of Adult React. Shout out to Timmy's Life. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Bye guys, gonna go eat burgers now. Hey everyone, Lauren Producer here at FBE. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you wanna help support the channel and look good doing it, go to shopfbe.com. Links are gonna be down in the description. Bye everyone.